I'm in the ether. <laughs> Let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present of Ben Wolkowitz via the phone. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Yep. Um, if, can I have a single motion for all the minutes listed? That's the regular minutes of April 28th, the executive minutes of May 12th, regular minutes of May 12th, executive minutes of May 28th, the regular minutes of May 28th, executive minutes of June 23rd, and the regular minutes of June 23rd. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Hey, thank you. Welcome. And it uh, might be a little rusty because this is my first uh, meeting since uh, early June. So I want to thank Council President Bob Landrigan for taking care of that uh, second meet meeting in June. And um, I was able to have a nice vacation, relax, and not worry about a thing. Well, maybe a few things. Um, the employees of the month for July, Tom Knudsen and Ralph Graham of the Madison Public Library for their work during the abatement process. Tom prepared the lobby area, assisted contractors, and cleaned and restored the lobby area. Ralph established and supervised a mini library operation in the council auditorium, in the Chase Auditorium for the convenience of the library patron patrons. And anniversary, Dave Carey, Madison Fire Department is celebrating his 20th anniversary or just celebrated his 21st, 20th anniversary on July 12th. And I just uh, heard some um, uh, sad news for the uh, Museum of Early Trades and Crafts that Vivian James has uh, announced her resignation, will be uh, taking a, a job at the uh, South Orange Performing uh, Arts Center. So, pack. so uh, we want to thank Vivian for her leadership to the museum of over, over the years. She really took it to uh, higher levels, and we will certainly miss her as part of our team in Madison. And I also want to mention a little bit about our uh, Civic Scholar Program, which was launched two years ago. If you remember, uh, Midori T Tagawa was our first Civic Scholar, came, in, come, came through whew, Drew University with her Civic Scholar Program worked in the administration in my office for the two years. Last year we had two civic scholars, Saif Yassin and Kara Anan, and in the goal of making exponential um, growth, we were hope to have double that again to four, at least four um, civic scholars this year, and they give 70 hours of unpaid internship time to help with administrative tasks, and in return they get a great education on what goes on in borough operations, including being involved in these meetings, uh, working with various professionals in various departments. Um, so it's a great program and it also meshes very well with our Chief Executive Council for Madison with its goal of um, providing educational leadership for tomorrow's leaders. And a report for the library this Saturday, and not to be missed, is Touch a Truck. From, Saturday, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the YMCA Library grounds, there will be dozens of trucks, new antique rail, railroad memorabilia, Batman and his Batmobile, a magic show, face painting, and the Balloon Man, all for the price of, of one admission. Uh, food will be available for sale on site, and all proceeds benefit the Madison Public Library's Children's Services Department. And the Friends of the Library wish to thank the Borough of Madison for its support given during this project. It is a done every other year and it is a lot of fun and you're allowed to touch most of, the, most of the trucks. Also at the library it's been a busy summer with 675 children registered for the summer reading program and hundreds of people all ages attending programs. Our the programs continue through mid-August so please visit the um, please visit to attend a program, borrow a book or a media <coughs> item, you know take a break from the heat out there and this 
week, there is some limitations due to the construction at Belmont, so check the borough and library website for locations of the lecture series. Some of the lectures have been moved due to the construction on Belmont. Reports from committees. Health, Mr. Landgren. Hey, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just two quick reminders. Being that this is the summer, uh, the health department is reminding people if you have stagnant water or in or around your house uh, to get rid of it. It's a breeding ground for mosquitoes. And finally, you know, more and more people are going to composting these days. And, you know, part of that is putting food out in your yard as fertilizer. Um, it is a menu. It's appetizing for uninvited guests, uh, different mice, whatever. So just be mindful of that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Public Works Engineering, Mr. Catanello. Thank you, Mayor. The uh, road construction program is in full swing around town. I'm sure many uh, people have noticed. Uh, we've been doing curbing on a number of streets, and we are set to do milling and overlay uh, on Academy, Vinton, and Belmont, uh, hopefully this week if the weather holds out, which it's supposed to. So uh, please bear with us while we work through uh, uh, while, while, we, while we work through this, uh, it may be a slight inconvenience from time to time, but in the long run, it will benefit uh, the town and your, your axles and tires. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Utilities, Ms. Vitali. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the electric department, um, they've been kind of busy. Uh, as you know, we've had a couple of uh, windstorms, and they did do, those storms did, um, some pretty bad s stuff in town. So what happened is, is that there was a very large tree that came down on Valley Road and a whole new pole had to be put up. Um, and it caused damage to uh, the overhead lines. Uh, there was another, um, there was another one on Glen, Glenweil that also had um, a big problem. And then a large portion of a tree came down onto the primary voltage lines and had to be removed on, on Greenwood Avenue and Valley Road. Um, so that took a lot of hours and, and some of that happened over the uh, July 4th uh, weekend. Um, in the meantime, they've installed <coughs> new poles and anchors at Woodland, Woodland Road and Union Hill, Edgewood and Valley. Um, They've completed pole transfers and system improvements on Woodland Road and Union Hill. And uh, they've removed poles for the police department firing range, uh, which is located down near the DPW. Uh, they completed removal of overhead secondary cables and installed new underground cables at 80 Green Village Road. Um, there's oil filtration systems for Bank 3B and 4B at James Park substations are now operational. Uh, one of the other um, items that uh, we, we've been um, really taking good care of uh, this past summer is that we have what is called the <coughs> Utility Advisory Committee. And we have met twice over the years, over the summer. And the group has discussed the mission of the committee, uh, which includes supporting <coughs> the water utility as well as the electric utility. Um, there was no ordinance, actually, as we, um, we realized that, that the Electric Utility Study Committee responsibilities and the membership and the purpose was not out there in, in an ordinance. So uh, Jim Burnett and I have been working on an ordinance, and um, what we will be doing is we're going to be formalizing the group of members and we hope to have the ordinance all ready for discussion at the August 11th meeting um, with the hopes of adopting the ordinance later in the year. We thought it was very important um, to change the name from Electric Utility Study Committee to Utility Advisory Committee um, because um, I have always felt that the water utility was kind of a stepchild. And uh, it's a very, very important, it's a very important utility. Um, we can survive without the electricity. I don't think that we'll do very well without water. So the infrastructure and the water utility is really important. So 
um, we're looking forward to bringing um, together a, a good a good group of people who really know um, these fields. So um, we'll have more discussion on that hopefully in a, on, on the August 11th meeting. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Public safety, Ms. Bailey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first off, the fencing of the wetlands area in the Madison Recreation Complex is scheduled to begin tomorrow. Um, this is where we have our trail system. And for the police department, uh, a number of uh, officers volunteered to clean up over the weekend and repair and enhance the police shooting range at the DPW yard. That included our chief, Chief Datchison, Sergeant Joe Longo, Detectives Paul Kowski, Ken Shannon, Officers Kevin Boone, Chris Keller, Vincent Della Valle, and Danny DiBiase from DPW also contribute their time and uh, efforts. So we thank them very much for that. And the fire department, um, the following Madison uh, probationary vo volunteer <coughs> firefighters recently completed a 171-hour firefighter, firefighter one training course given at the Morris County Fire Training Academy. That was Ken Syke, Evan Webb, Dave Ernst. We want to thank them and congratulate them for their dedication and commitment to Madison fire department and our town and this is just the first step in becoming a volunteer firefighter and finally the fire department's ground ladders ladder truck and three pumpers were recently tested all the equipment passed as required thank you mayor thank you finance and borough clerk mr volkowitz thank you mayor uh, I would uh, like to begin by telling you all that uh, the process that we just completed is starting up over again, and that's the municipal budget process. There's been a kickoff meeting with department heads, and there will be internal development, I'm sorry, internal department budget hearings beginning on August 1st. At our next council meeting, we're going to have uh, our outside bond council attend and discuss the possible advance refunding of our long-term debt, uh, which we would consider doing as a, as a way to reduce our interest costs. Uh, the promise is to be an interesting discussion. We've had some preliminary investigations of the possibility, and indeed they do exist. Uh, moving on from there, uh, I have a, we have a milestone that we just passed with regard to the Green Village Road school property. Um, we have had an initial litigation deadline come and go without any litigation appearing. And after 8-11, August 11th, that will be the last date at which uh, litigation could be uh, uh, started. So right now it's looking good. And after that happens, after the last deadline for litigation, $1 million in escrow will be released to the Board of Ed another big step, and the developers will begin paying the borough $12,500 a month. So it's, uh, after a long time and lots of work, it's close to starting to bear fruit. And then just as a final note, strategic planning committees have been meeting throughout the summer, <coughs> making very good progress, uh, and I'm optimistic that they will each be producing reports that will be worth your while and have some uh, meaningful impact on the way the borough does its business. Thank you. Thank you. Community Affairs, Mr. Rowe. Um, several announcements. First, for the Downtown Development Commission. Um, they want to ask everyone to please celebrate Madison's 125th birthday by joining in the Flat Madison Challenge. Uh, there are Flat James Madison's, I think, online, Jim as well as around the borough. We'd like people to try to post uh, 125 pictures of Flat Madison by Bottle Hill Day. So they're asking everyone to get one, color it in, <clears throat> take pictures of your Flat Madison and favorite places throughout Madison or any, or any uh, Madison throughout the world. Also take place, pictures of him everywhere you go. He likes to travel. Try to incorporate, incorporate the fun facts into your photos. For example, take a picture of Flat Madison in Princeton or a picture of him reading Latin. Post your pictures using the hashtags FlatMad, Mad125, or Love Madison, New Jersey, and also share I Love Madison, New Jersey on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
And finally, look for the Flat Madison display at Bottle Hill Day, which will be at the end of September. If you get 125 likes on your hashtag Flat Madison posting, you'll be eligible to win a $25 Love Madison shopping spree for a family member who's 20, or I'm sorry, who's 18 or older. The second uh, from the DDC is the reminder that the clam bake is coming up on Saturday, August 16th. It's going to run from 4 to 9 p.m. It's going to have uh, great food. There's also going to be live music, games for the kids, and it's going to end with an outdoor movie. I believe these went out with the electricity bills this month, and they're also available online. So um, please uh, get these back as quickly as possible. We'd like to get a good head count, and we'd like to see a great turnout. Um, and then from the Senior Center Advisory Committee, uh, we're getting new floor tiles installed in the main room in July, and the results so far have drawn excellent reviews from the seniors, and they want to thank the council for including this project in the 2014 budget. And second, the summer seminar series is continuing to draw a large audience in its 30th anniversary year, averaging over 50 people per person. Uh, one challenge has been notifying potential attendees of the venue change for the last two speakers. Because of paving outside the library, the Civic Center will be hosting the July 28th and July 31st programs. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Communications and petitions. None received, Mayor. All right, this is our first of two invitations for discussion. This one is limited to items on our agenda discussion or resolutions that are listed. So, and on our agenda discussion are, is the 2013 Municipal Audit, DDC term limits, garbage and recycling presentation, and MRC note rollover. So you can comment on any of those items or any of the resolutions are listed. For those guidelines, anyone wishing to be heard, please step to the lectern, state your name, your address, and please keep your, minute, your comments to about three minutes or less. Anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And our first agenda discussion is the municipal audit. As uh, most of you are aware, regarding the all municipal audits, the, the local finance board of the state of New Jersey requires that uh, all members of the governing body certify by resolution that at a minimum you have read the general comments and recommendations. There were two recommendations uh, in the 2013 audit. One was an adequate segregation of duties be maintained with respect to the recording and treasury functions, and number two, that older <coughs> capital grant receivables are reviewed for possible cancellation by either amending the ordinance or canceling the related improvement authorization. Uh, I intend to uh, come before the uh, governing body on the August 11th meeting with a corrective action plan to address both of these recommendations. Okay. Um, ben, do you have anything to add? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, the audit committee met with the two partners, but Ms. Savacci of the firm that does our audit, uh, with the two partners responsible for Madison, David Evans and Valerie Dolan, and we went through uh, the audit in some detail and focused a good deal of our time on those recommendations, and I, I just want to review them for a moment and our feelings about that. Uh, w the first one is that there should be a separation of duties in the finance department. The duties that are specified are, one, the collection of monies, the disbursement of funds, and the reconciliation of bank statements. We believe that with uh, a new hire soon to come on, that we'll, ha we'll be halfway there in solving those problems. The one that's a little trickier is the uh, collection of money. It requires a, a, a very significant change in the way that process is currently conducted. As an aside, uh, we understand that of municipalities the size of Madison, only about 5%, in fact, centralized the collection. Nevertheless, we want to investigate the possibility in some detail, and the separation of the other two duties we feel is essential. The other issue that came up is that uh, the issue of grants staying on the financial records of the borough long after the grant has either been totally spent and or the appropriations that were allocated from the grant have also uh, have been totally spent, and so indeed there's no reason for the grant to remain in our books. There are now three grants that uh, should be off, and as uh, our CFO just told us, that will be handled 
very soon and, and done, but we'd also like to encourage the administration to promulgate a rule that specifies when and how long it takes to remove a grant when it's appropriate to have it off the, the records of the, of the borough. Um, these are two recommendations that have come up several times. We feel very strongly and would like the support of the council that these be addressed, resolved, and disappear. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I, I have a, a question for Ben. Uh, ben, you said there were three grants that were outstanding. Do you, do you know what yes. they are off, offhand? Yes, Maybe but uh, I don't know the official names of each of them. Uh, Robert, do you have that off the top, or I can help you by just describing them, but I don't have the official titles. I have it. Okay, good. There is a grant in the amount of $32,475 from the Morris County Community, Community Development Grant Program. There's a grant, uh, trans a New Jersey Transportation Enhancement Grant of 26556 and the grant from the Hartley Dodge Memorial Trustees, of which we're going to cancel, in the amount of $150,045. And, and the uh, reason for the trustees is we got um, the equivalent of that in in-kind yes. uh, carpet and other things like along those lines. That is correct. Right. Any other questions or comments? All right, so we have resolution uh, 212 that is on the consent agenda, and then we'll be talking more about the at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Downtown Development Commission term limits. Pat? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is just a simple request from the DDC to change the membership language that eliminates the language that limits um, members from serving for more than three consecutive terms. Um, in researching this, the Downtown Development Commission was the only board that actually had this limitation. We don't impose this on any of our other committees advisory boards or commissions um, and the feeling was that we there really didn't seem to be a particularly good reason why we're limiting people's participation and we really didn't want to lose a lot of good people who would be term limited out in the very near future so they're asking us to uh, to make that modification questions or comments yeah we're not too sure what the history behind singling that one commission out for term limits <laughs> thank you that's uh, Ordinance 41, which will be introduced tonight. Garbage and recycling. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have all of our garbage and recycling and yard waste contracts coming due. You don't have to turn around, Austria. It's the exact presentations in front of you. I don't hate to have you turn like that. And I'm not even going to turn myself. I'm going to look down at my notes. Um, so. Uh, we have contracts and costs. Um, we have three services that are provided through these uh, line items with the borough. Um, garbage, recycling, and yard waste. I think everyone's familiar with them. There are five service providers that help us with garbage, recycling, and yard waste. There are four contracts. All four of those contracts are coming due at the end of the year. And the total cost to the borough of Madison is close to one million. Uh, uh, $333,000. That's the annual budget. We don't always use the entire budget, but that's the, uh, that's the budgeted line items for those particular items. Um, I do want to say in the outset, I think we do a uh, good job, um, and I think that there's not a lot of room for cost reductions unless we look at some sort of changes in services. Having said that, there are a few nuanced questions that we want to ask here because we're going to be going to bid um, on this in, uh, later on in the year for new contracts for 2015 and beyond. And there's some, there's some questions that we want to ask you guys. Yes, sir. Annual budget, does that include tipping fees or tipping yes. fees? Yes, yep. So thank you for the lead-in. Here's um, the, five contract, or the five service providers. We have uh, garbage hauling, the guys that come and pick it up and take it. That's suburban. Holes. That's suburban. We have, dis uh, that's the number one, we have the disposal, and that goes to Morris County, the tipping fees at Morris County, um, the MCMUA, that's $520,000. So the $1.3 million, $520,000 budgeted line, I don't want to say it's locked in, but it, we're controlled by a wasteful water. We cannot take 
that garbage anywhere else. The county has a wasteful order where all garbage, commercial, residential <coughs> alike, has to go to, um, to the county tipping uh, facilities. Um, recycling, we have two service providers there. We have the hauler that comes and picks it up at the street and takes it to a facility. Unlike other towns, some other towns just say, you take the stuff and it's your problem. And um, to be honest with you, the item ha the uh, materials do have value that you can sell and make 6000 10000 20000 even up to $75,000 a year on those materials. So we, we prefer to own those materials and make money by selling them. So we have a separate contract, that's number four, for the disposal of the materials. That's with a uh, um, waste management's um, arm called Recycle America. Um, that is typically revenue that comes in. It is very hard to anticipate because it's pegged on market um, uh, indexes, so we typically have that come as miscellaneous revenue not anticipated, and I'll have some information on that in a little bit. And the final one is curbside yard waste, um, and that's currently uh, done by Waste Industries. If you really want to go back to your black book, you can see the various line items that are referenced um, here uh, for the various um, uh, services. So if we go to garbage, as I said before, we have Suburban and the MCMUA. Um, we currently have twice a week garbage pickup um, from May uh, through the winter to September, um, and I'm sorry, through the summer, from May through September, and then once a week the rest of the year. We're not suggesting changing the schedule. We believe we should keep the schedule the same. Obviously, there would be some potential savings if you wanted to go to once a week, but I, I, I think we're, we and David Maines and the Department of Public Works are happy with that schedule. Um, as I said before, the county waste flow order mandates that all garbage must go to um, the MCMUA tipping stations. It's currently close to $100 per ton. Um, when you add the hauling line one and line two together and divide it by the total um, uh, cost, it, it comes close to $200 per ton for the dis collection and disposal of the residential garbage. So uh, recycling, um, we have, as I mentioned before, two service providers. If you flip to the next page, um, we have the hauling by Suburban. Um, that used to be first occupational, but we had uh, Suburban pick that up. And then we have disposal um, through Recycle America. Yes, Bob. Jim, just to go back to the prior one, the tipping fees, that money goes to the county. And I know that <coughs> Morris County pays an inordinate amount of money, much more than other counties for tipping. Any chance of anybody and that getting reduced? It would um, require a combination of, of action by uh, the Mars County Municipal Utility Authority mm -hmm. and um, or potential political pressure with the freeholders. Um, right now, they go through a very extensive bid process um, mm -hmm. to have that garbage, um, first of all, managed on site and then trucked off to its final destination. So um, while uh, you're correct, we pay one of the four highest average tipping fees um, in the state um, it's, uh, it's, it's a wasteful order that, you know, is, is legally hard for us to abrogate. If we were able to somehow get around it, we could reduce our, our tipping fee costs, but um, well, obviously there would be a significant but... legal challenge if we were to try to do that. Jim, is, is that a profit center for the county, or is that supposed to just cover the cost of running that utility? It's supposed to just cover the cost of running that good utility. Question. <laughs> yeah. a good question. That's a good question. It's, it's, um, in the past, we've asked them for details, and, and we've gotten some details. Um, and, uh, but yes, it's supposed to be, the county's not making it a profit center and then taking revenue and using it for um, the county budget. But uh, people should know that the two uh, tipping stations, one in Parsippany and one in Mount Olive, um, the host communities receive um, a certain amount of money per ton um, of garbage that comes in. It's for the inconvenience of mm -hmm. having trucks coming I mean, imagine all these garbage trucks coming into your town and out of your town every day. So they, so there's a portion of that <clears throat> almost $100 tipping fee that goes to that. And to be honest with you, a portion of that tipping fee is a recycling rebate. So you're paying it in garbage, but then we're getting it rebated back to us in our recycling, um, our recycling grant. So we file all the necessary paperwork to kind of reclaim that money. So, um, but, uh, but, you're, but to answer your question, Pat, it's not supposed to be run as a profit center. Thank you. Jim, <coughs> yes, when, when, when you indicated that uh, uh, some other communities, uh, you're basically on your own with regard to these services, and we know that indeed they're unbundled and some of them are charged for directly, is it all of these services or just a subset? Uh, you're talking about a, an individual resident in a town like Chatham Township that has to go out and, and, and purchase those services on their own? Yeah. 
correct. Um, uh, yes, correct. I mean, it, it's um, typically uh, <coughs> recycling needs to be offered in some way by the community, but uh, garbage and uh, yard waste um, has to be handled by the resident. Chatham has no um, option uh, for either. You have to hire private haulers if you want to take care of either, either of those. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, as, as you know, collection for recycling is currently over three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, the cost per ton for hauling and disposal of the material is about $120, so it's much less than um, garbage. And that's the whole point of recycling, and the whole point of us wanting to encourage recycling is that uh, it's much less expensive for us to get rid of that material, and obviously it stays out of landfills and it gets um, repurposed and reused. Um, so one item that um, has received a fair amount of discussion in the world of recycling is single stream recycling. We currently do dual stream recycling. That means that we separate paper, cardboard, um, and uh, junk mail. And then we have the commingled containers, the aluminum, the plastic, the tin, the glass. And uh, by separating them, you get a cleaner material. Single stream, the concept is you have one garbage can, you can throw everything away into one garbage can. Um, they, uh, they've done some studies, and there is usually an increase in the amount of recycling that people do because it's a little easier. There's not two cans, there's one can to go out. So you may save a little bit on your tipping fees there. Um, and if we were to go to single stream, it's possible that we would be saving on recycling hauling. We did get a quote, excuse me, from the Morris County Municipal Utility Authority for single stream recycling. They actually offer a service where they would come into town, and they do it for many towns, including Chatham. They would come to town, take the recyclable material, take it up to their facility in uh, Mine Hill, they have a highly mechanized system that was uh, built and operated by ReCommunity that separates all the materials out. Reverse magnets that pull the aluminum, uh, magnets that pull the tin, um, blowing systems that blow the paper off, and they me mechanically separate all the items. Um, so there's some potential savings there, but there's some potential loss in revenue because when you put all those items together, the paper gets... Um, the paper honestly gets contaminated. It gets contaminated with food, it gets contaminated with ground glass. So if, when we were, if we were to take that material and go and sell it, we wouldn't get as much money. So this is just an illustrative, oh, I'm sorry, I'm off a page. Um, this is just a, an illustrative example of, um, at the bottom of the recycling page that talks about a potential savings of around $20,000 for going to single stream. We'd reduce some hauling costs, we'd increase um, recycling, um, which would reduce garbage tipping fees, uh, but unfortunately, we'd have a reduction in the sale of the recyclable materials. Just a so. quick on, on B there. Mm -hmm. Madison is one of the t top communities in the county, if I know, for recycling. So we may not, because we're already doing such a good job, we may not see any savings or minimal savings by going to single stream. That's correct. If you were to go out and search single stream, you may hear someone say, your recycling rate's going to go up 30%, or you're, you're going to reduce the garbage the amount going to the garbage by 30%, and that obviously would be a significant savings. 30% of that $50,000 number would be $150,000. That's not going to be the case in Madison, and the towns that have shifted over to single stream with, through the MCMUA are seeing like a 3% increase in recycling, and I think Madison may be even a little more mature in our recycling and more um, uh, advanced in our recycling, and, and as such, um, I'm, I'm not so sure that we'd see a significant increase in recycling. But it would be, sorry, Definitely. it would be a convenience factor. I mean, I wouldn't have to sit there and yeah. put out different piles. And I'm assuming I can put it all in the same sort of garbage can size container. Is there a limitation on the weight that can be in there? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, 50, to, 50 or 80 pounds, depending on the hauler. And, and you're suggesting we would do that? that that's every other week. So, sure, so yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. There's a question later on about what we want to do. But it would be, if we were to do single stream, we can talk about it now. Instead of you putting paper out... <laughs> on week one and commingled out on week two and paper out on week three and commingled out on week four, we would have a truck come every other week. So week two and week four, a truck would come and it would take the container that had both the paper and the commingled. So we would reduce the amount of trucks in town, which is a benefit. We would reduce um, the air pollution, the noise pollution. Um, there's a little bit of an inconvenience. Oh, geez, I missed it. Today was the day. Now you're going to have a full month of your recycling that's going to collect before you've got to get rid of it, um, which is a little bit, I mean, if you, if you miss your paper, you're only missing it two weeks. 
you'd have to miss both your paper and your commingled to have the same effect as missing it. So there's a little bit of an inconvenience factor there. Um, but uh, but um, so that's that's in summary what we'd be looking to do if we went with single stream. But it doesn't sound like there's any really strong negatives. It's not going to cost us more. It's um, it'll probably make things easier for people. And if you can throw everything in one, you don't have to worry. Did I put the wrong container out? And uh, it'll there'll be one less. Every other week, you only have those chunks sitting on your curb, as opposed to, especially right now, the papers tend to be kind of a more of a mess because people don't put them in a garbage can. They put smaller containers out. Yep. So um, I think it's all worth the debate as to whether you want to advance go going to single stream or not. So, um, whoops. I just asked you a come, question Carmel's before you go any further. Um, would you, uh, would, you're saying 50 pounds would be the limit in each one of the garbage, in the garbage can. Are you limited to how many garbage cans? It Put doesn't matter. Put out four garbage cans yeah. if you want to. Yeah. No limit there. And different haulers will have different weight limits. The one, right. the, the bid that we received from the MCMUA today was a 50-pound limit. Do, do we have to invest in a certain type of, um, of can? Because, uh, you know, the communities that I see that have single stream, you know, have a certain type. Like Hanover Township just went to single stream and garbage collection, and they actually have certain garbage cans so that it could be, you know, lifted, you know, um, and they save money, I guess, on, on personnel, you know, uh, two people in a truck or whatever. Some towns, so, that, some towns that do the hauling themselves, and yeah. some still do. Most don't, most of them, but we've done and gotten out of the hauling business. But some towns that do, um, to reduce costs, have gone with mechanized, and you see them kind of more than newer communities, like my father in Florida. You roll the can out, and it actually has a mechanical arm that grabs it, puts the garbage in, or puts the recycling in. Um, some towns will go out and buy these containers for the towns. They actually have to go out and bond for them, because if you imagine having to go out mm -hmm. and buy 5,000 containers yep. that are hundred dollars a piece it's a significant um, a significant amount and if you did one for recycling would you do one for garbage as well so Madison typically has not done that um, in terms of purchasing the containers um, there would be no need to have a special container you can use a Rubbermaid tub or um, obviously we you know suggest using a 30 gallon uh, garbage can with a lid on it okay Ben do you have any questions I might just shout out to you every once in a while to make sure you have any questions no, I'm fine. Thank you. Great. So um, we'll, we'll go to the next page here. Oops, I went too fast again. We'll go to the next page here, which has just to show you a little bit about and talk a little bit about the marketing of recyclable materials. Um, a, a few years ago, there was a high value to the paper that we were selling. And in 2011, we received over $75,000 in revenue from the sale of our recyclable materials. That's pretty good when you look at the hauling cost of $214,000. I mean, it was obviously less than 2011, less than $200,000, and we were able to knock that bill almost in half. Um, the contracts that we have and the only contracts we can get with the people that will sell this material for us are index-based. They'll not, they, they won't say, you know, we'll guarantee to give you $30 a ton no matter what. Um, and uh, so we're unable to get a contract like that that has any sort of minimum floor on it. We're going to try to at least get a floor of zero so we don't pay. But um, there's something called China's uh, Green Fence. Uh, China, you may have heard, um, is a major recipient of our recyclable materials. They take, the ships come to the United States full of merchandise. They're going back empty. Instead, now they're going back with our recyclable materials, and the uh, Chinese have plants to convert the paper, reuse it again to make cardboard, convert the plastics and the other materials, again, to use it in the manufacturing process to make more goods. Um, so uh, China has um, uh, been aggressive in uh, their uh, turning away contaminated uh, recycling and not purchasing it anymore. Uh, and as such, the amount of revenue that we're getting has dropped significantly. There's really not much we can do in that regard. My only suggestion is that any contract that we do with uh, Waste Management or Recycle America or any of these that will be marketing our material, that would be a short-term contract that we can get out of. So if the market turns and benefits, uh, we could um, renegotiate a better contract. Even though it's pegged to indexes, um, there's... Four or five years ago, there were some great contracts out there. Um, we didn't um, get on that bandwagon at that time. We were a little, uh, we'd already locked in five and a half years ago. So uh, we, hopefully, uh, the markets will turn around. So I'd like to keep that to a short-term contract. 
So uh, this is just an article um, which this uh, presentation will be posted on Rosenet and you have that just talks about the um, marketing the materials and it going to China. And go to the next page. Um, so real quickly, we have recycling for our TVs. Uh, TVs are no longer accepted uh, as garbage. They must be recycled. Um, the borough offers electronic recycling drop-off at the DPW yard and PC problems. Styrofoam recycling started in 2014. Material can be dropped off at pack ship and more. Um, that's costing us uh, no dollars in removing that material from the waste stream. Um, pack ship and more uses whatever styrofoam they can. <coughs> um, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, the excess material goes to a facility in Springfield that actually remanufactures it, recycles it, and uses it again. Um, <coughs> lithium and rechargeable batteries can be dropped off at Radio Shack. Uh, I'm just throwing it out there because I did have a resident mention to me about what about composting food. You see it more in urban areas, England, uh, London, outside London suburbs, they actually have composting where your food gets picked up and taken to a compost facility. Um, can it be done? Yes, Princeton has a program, but residents have to pay extra for it. Um, it's not a, a program that um, I think is going to be easily adaptable here. In Princeton, Princeton is like Chatham Township or Chatham Borough where you're paying for the garbage to go. Um, Chatham Borough has a pay as you throw per bag fee. Pr um, Chatham Township has you just hire your hauler. So there's an incentive for the residents to try to reduce the amount of garbage they have. And they, um, so they've developed a, a pilot program for composting food and the residents pay for composting food over here, but then they presumably are paying a smaller amount for their garbage because there's less, less material going in the garbage. Um, I, my uh, position on that is, is wait and see um, on composting until we can see if it becomes a little, little larger, but I'm certainly willing to entertain any discussions on there if anybody... Uh, and one question, do we know what percentage of the garbage that gets hauled out of here would be eligible for composting? It'd be a small amount. Heavy weight, though, so... Yeah. Well, um, I'm talking about weight. Gar garbage, about is, garbage is based on weight. I don't have an accurate number on that, Pat, so okay. I don't want to... Is there a sort of an industry standard that says... You know, I'll find out. I'm okay. sure there is. That's a good question. I'll find out. So, uh, next steps, and I apologize, I violated the uh, PowerPoint rule of having too much text on a page, but since these get posted on Rosenet, um, just have to apologize. So um, what we're going to do is go out, I'm working with uh, Ray and with Matt and Matt's staff and Linda, Linda Sawyer, our new QPA, um, to uh, draft um, some bid specifications. We've already gone out and received quotes on recycling, um, on the marketing of our recyclable materials. Um, as I said before, these, these contracts aren't great. Um, these, this type of contract is exempt from New Jersey bid regulations, so we don't have to go out and bid them. We can go out and negotiate directly with these companies. It's one of the few things that's uh, exempt. Um, the second item that we've already done is solicited uh, terms from the Morris County Municipal Utility Authority on single stream recycling. Um, and that's a little bit different because they're going to take the material and take it up to the re-community facility. And in that contract, we don't have any opportunity to make $75,000 a year on, on the materials. We can make a little bit of money, but the upside is very minimal on the marketing of the recyclable materials. So we are going to go out to bid um, for three separate hauling collection contracts. The garbage hauling, same collection <coughs> schedule as we talked about, right? Twice a year in the summer, once during the rest of the year, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, th uh, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, yard waste hauling, we'll bid two options. We'll bid the same collection schedule which you have right now. It's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which dovetails in with recycling. But we're also going to bid um, for one pickup, and I'll explain that later, like one pickup day, a single day where they come into town and take the yard waste for the entire town. Recycling hauling, we'll do um, four separate options. Single stream <coughs> every week under the same schedule. Dual stream alternating every week under the same schedule, which is what we currently have. Single stream every other week with one day pickup and dual stream alternating every week with one day pickup. And that's a little bit different than what you have in the printout. It's actually one day pickup on, on D. Um, one item that I want to bring to your attention, and it may sound a little obtuse, is the possible bid option for hauling um, contracts to use natural gas vehicles. Um, a lot of fleets are shifting to natural <coughs> gas vehicles. If you go to the next page, you'll see an article about fleets switching over um, by uh, maybe offering a very modest monetary um, increase in, uh, for a hauler that were to offer us natural gas trucks. We get, <coughs> we get a couple of things. We get better reliability because they're newer trucks. 
um, because these trucks, by their very nature, um, really have only been out in the market for the last few years. We would uh, have um, a reduction in greenhouse gases because these trucks put out anywhere from 6 to 11 percent less in greenhouse gases. So um, I would um, advocate for a small um, bump in, the, uh, in that, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So next page is uh, questions to council. And we've kind of gone through this, and this is where. Oh, Rob, did you have a question you want to say? Just if you, the um, I read that Wall Street Journal article, and it actually says it's cheaper to operate natural gas uh, trucks. So why should we pay more for them? Um, because I think that there are few companies that are going to bid, and we could still end up getting a, a company that comes in with very old trucks that says, "I'll do it," because I've got this old fleet of trucks that I've already paid for. So while the operation of the truck may be cheaper, the overall capital investment limits or precludes some of the companies from doing it. Having said that, if, if you all want to say, hey, we're willing to take a truck with natural gas, but we don't want to pay any extra, that's you know, certainly up for debate tonight. Um, so uh, questions to council, um, and Pat started to touch on this, dual stream versus single stream. Does there need to be a savings for us to consider doing this? Um, uh, the couple of um, couple of things to keep in mind: the one dual stream quote that we have right now is from the Morris County Municipal Utility Authority. We're not getting the benefit of selling that material. If we go dual stream, uh, what I what I need to do is do a little bit of math and say, look, we're going to save thirty thousand dollars all in. We're not going to make seventy five thousand or sixty thousand or fifty thousand dollars on the sale of the materials. So we need to see a significant savings on the hauling side. Um, so uh, with that, I wanted to just kind of ask council's opinion now. Do you have an opinion? I know Pat shaking his head saying, no, dual, do dual stream. Um, no, I'm saying I, wouldn't, I don't need a premium for a savings to go to single stream. I would just go with whichever is cheaper. Okay. Bob, you want to? Yeah, I mean, um, I did ask my supervisor at home, namely my wife, and uh, <laughs> she likes single stream. It's easier. You know, in her opinion, and I kind of agree, you know, you just put it out two days, you know, two days a week, they pick up everything. Just as long as it doesn't cost more money. You know, my concern was too much at once, but the reality of it is, um, it shouldn't be. Okay. I think what, what, one thing to keep in mind, once we go single stream, you're, we're never going to go back to dual stream. And if we find a situation where dual stream, they're, they're making a lot of money on their recyclable materials, I don't know that we'll switch back ever. So there'll be a potential opportunity cost down the road. Yeah. Um, if other towns that are staying with dual stream are making $75,000 a year on a sale of their materials. Rob, Rob and then Carmela, and then back to Pat. Thank you. Um, my, my main concerns with switching to single stream are, first, what you just mentioned. Uh, second, the paper is automatically contaminated, so we can't get across the, the green wall to potentially the biggest uh, customer. And on a more practical note, um, you know, we recycle a lot of stuff, and I can't imagine storing up all the paper and and cans <coughs> for two weeks before I take it out. At least this way, what I'm doing one, you know, once a week, you know, I'm I'm reducing the size. And then, look, we're all human. I guarantee you, everyone in this town is going to miss it one day, and then not to be able to have to have a, a month's worth of recyclables uh, sitting in your garage or wherever. I, it's just. I mean, it'd be crazy, you know. Uh, I, my view, but I recycle a lot, so, uh, so I, I'm a big proponent of sticking with the, the dual stream. Carmela. Well, I, I've been an advocate for uh, single stream for a long time. Jim and I have talked about it over years, um, and I, I'm that person who forgets. I have to tell you, I don't want to tell you what my garage looks like with newspaper. Um, so. But what I, what I see, and I'm in a lot of communities, what I see is it's cleaner. Um, you don't have papers that are not put into bags, and you have a windstorm or whatever, and they're all over the neighborhood. At least they're in containers so that, uh, you know, and, and I, I just see it. I mean, Hanover Township, Florham Park, uh, East Hanover, all of these, Morris Plains, they all have single stream. And I see it because I'm driving and I'm working in all of these communities. So, um, of course, money is a factor. You know, um, I'd like to, um, you know, see what this eventually is, is um, going to cost. 
but I also think that it's something that we should consider. Hey, listen, we, we got used to, um, you know, twice a week garbage, and we got used to once a week garbage. So I, I think that it's just a matter of knowing that every Monday your recycling is going to be picked up. I mean, I, every single Wednesday, I have to go to the recycling newsletter and figure out what I am putting out. And then if it's not out, it's gone. I am very hesitant lots of times about putting newspapers out, especially if we're having a storm or whatever, because I know what, uh, what it can create. But um, I, am a sing I am an advocate for single stream, have been for a long time, because I see it working. So, um, you know, when, when you come back and, and tell us what the cost is, um, my other, I have another question for you. When, when you go out for bid, I mean, actually, how many people are, can you go out that will actually bid on garbage and recycling? I think there are I a mean, number we don't really have too many people that. that I think there are a number of companies that will um, offer a hauling contract. And certainly there are, there are companies that are embedded in the area that win a lot of contracts. Our current garbage hauler and recycling hauler, Suburban, um, I think offers excellent service. Um, they do offer natural gas um, trucks, and mm -hmm. they're pretty prevalent in our area. Um, but it is a bid situation, and I need to be clear on that, which right. is why I'm asking for kind of specific numbers, because we actually need to draft into the bid specs. Right. If we're going to give a premium for natural gas, what would that be? I'll use an example. Company A says, I'll do uh, your pickup for $500,000 a year. I have natural gas trucks. Company B, which has older, dirty diesel trucks, um, bids $498,000. We have to take company B. But if we put in there and say we're willing to pay up to a 2% premium, then we could go to the natural gas company that has the newer trucks. It could turn out that the company that has the natural gas trucks Bids 475, and it's the lowest bid. And great, it just happens to be natural gas vehicles. But if we don't have that option in there, we're going to have to um, uh, go with the lowest bid. Which is why it's important for us to have specific numbers and specific information that we build into these bid specifications, so we can award it without any contesting. And I'm sure Matt can talk more but about you that. You think that we would get more than one bid? Because in the past, you know, we we've had come, you know, a company, one company come out and just bid. I, I wasn't here five yeah. years ago, but yeah. I'm certainly going to be yeah. aggressive in, in, you know, making sure that we do a good job advertising this, giving it a long okay. period of time to be out on the street, answering uh, questions if we have to, modifying the specifications to comply with any of the questions or concerns that the bidders have so we get the most competition. Most competition is going to get us hopefully the lowest price. Right. Okay. okay uh, Austria and then back to Pat again. Oh. And then, 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 we'll, then we'll get Ben after Pat. Thank you. Um, you know, I agree with uh, Mr. Catalanello. Um, I think that the dual stream is actually more environmentally sensitive. And um, I wouldn't want to lose, I mean, I guess the numbers will tell whether we would lose out on um, what we are achieving by doing the dual stream. I'd like to stay with dual stream. I, I too have a lot of recycling. And I know when I need to put the cans out, and I know when I need to put the papers. Oh, I, I know it too, Austria. I just forget. <laughs> oh, oh no, I don't forget. It's staring me in the face. <laughs> anyway, thank you. I mean, there, I, if I could jump in, Mayor, there is there is the possibility of doing single stream recycling every week and continuing yep. with the concept of having a trucks in town every week. Um, we would not have any savings in the hauling. Um, we would have savings, um, you know, and, and we wouldn't have any savings in the hauling. We might have a little, little increased recycling, um, but that, um, that's expensive. When we look at the tonnage of the trucks that are leaving here, these trucks can hold up to uh, five, six, seven tons, depending on the compression and what the material is. And sometimes they're only dropping off um, a ton or a ton and a half. So we're leaving town with somewhat empty vehicles. Empty vehicles. One of the benefits of going to a Monday as being the day for a recycling pickup or Thursday, whatever that day is, is that company's going to have to figure out, hey, it's it's after Christmas, that's going to be a heavy week. I need to get seven trucks into Madison on that day. But on 
uh, an August, a very quiet August um, summer week, that Thursday, they only need to bring in three trucks. So there's some potential savings for that. And there really are two questions, so I don't want to contaminate, no pun intended, the conversation with that. But that's a second question that we're going to have is going to all pick up on one day or going um, with uh, the current schedule that we have. There are benefits to the current schedule that we have. Right now, if I'm on Tuesday recycling pickup, if they miss me for whatever reason, I call DPW, DPW goes, oh, the truck's out of town today, but I'll be in town tomorrow, I'll pick you up. That wouldn't happen that in happens. the current situation. And yeah. that, 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 that happens a, certainly than it should, yeah. you know, a fair amount. Pat, Pat, and then we'll get to Ben. Um, yeah, one quick question. You said if we go to single stream, we couldn't go back to dual, or you didn't think we could. Why? No, it's just a matter of perception. We certainly could. We could say, okay, people, okay. shift it, bring two cans back in. That's just a matter of, of us getting it out. We could do it. It would just take um, a fair amount of marketing and a fair amount of uh, getting people to convert back. And there is this mentality that single stream is better, single stream is newer, single stream is the way to go. Um, I don't fully subscribe to that. I, sh I should say I took like 10 classes. I am the town's official municipal recycling coordinator. Every town has to have one, so that's another hat that I wear. Um, but uh, in, in any event, um, so just to be clear, we could convert back. Okay, because, I mean, to me, it's the convenience factor is, is better. I, I understand Rob's issue, but for me, having two covered garbage cans that I could just fill up as opposed to one for bottles and cans, and then all the bins for paper that, you're right, they sit out in the street, half exposed in, in the, when it rains, they must pick up quite a bit of weight from all the water. Um, and, and so again, I, I don't think we need to see a savings. I, I'd actually just go whatever was cheaper. And I would just let people know that down the road, if there's a significant savings by switching to whatever we didn't choose this time, I, you know, I wouldn't have a problem just going back to the taxpayers and say, you know, in an effort to save you money, I'd, I'd prefer to switch back to you know, dual if we've gone to single because that's just where the market is right now. I think we need to be flexible. Uh, ben, do you have anything to add? Or? Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, basically, I support what Pat said. I, I too, am sensitive to Rob's points. Um, I think they are excellent points, and I, and, I, and I understand them very well, given my own behavior. Uh, but on the other hand, the one thing I've if I've paid any attention to it at all, the one thing I've noted is how sloppy the place sometimes looks when we have bad weather and people have stuck their newspapers out just in bags or in a pile. And it, it, I would like to see that go away. So the notion of a single stream appeals to me for that reason. By the way, I too wouldn't be worried about a premium. I would just look for whatever is less expensive. We have a three-three time, Mayor. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and my thoughts on this is, uh, I, th I think our current system works fairly well. I don't think because of uh, Madison's track record with recycling, we're going to kick it up a notch at all with a single stream. Personally, as I look at how I would be dealing with my um, recycling, I think I would still separate the paper because I think I'm going to lose volume in my uh, b where the bottles and cans are going because the paper is going to not allow things to settle as well as they do. So I'm going to still have ex extra barrels out there, which is just my personal thing. I, I have a messy desk, but I like things in, uh, in order. I don't know what, what that means. But <laughs> the, um, the idea of natural gas, it's a nice one. I saw one of our haulers uh, last week with a natural gas truck, but I can't come up with what the premium would be we'd be willing to spend. So I'd say, no, that's not going to go in there. And we'll just, uh, you know, Rob's right. If you look, look at the article quickly, in one year they pay off the extra investment, and so a year or two they're doing quite well. So I think you'll, we'll see haulers switching over to natural gas, so we don't need to have that in there. Um, so we're... So I'm going we'll to say wait, we have we'll consensus. Wait for the numbers, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. We'll well, so yeah. We, we, can't, we can't really wait for the numbers. Yeah. We need to have with it, because once we put out the bid, we need to have an awardable document, and have an awardable document, we need to have guidance in there. So for but sure we have guidance on natural gas. There's no premium for natural gas. Yep. We won't even put it in there. We can say, you know, Madison would, you know, entertain both diesel or natural gas vehicles, um, but there'd be no, no premium um, offered for natural gas. Um, the but, well, we, have, we know what the single, because we would probably go to... MUA for the single stream, or we'd still go out to if we were going to 
Well, the MUA has given us one hauling price for single stream, but we haven't received a hauling price from anyone else for single stream. So we, we don't know. Back with uh, $199,000. So let's go backwards a few clicks here. Um, the MUAs um, come back with, whoops, that's the Ooh. wrong button. Um, uh, so here's $214,000. The MUA says 199, but we're not going to get any money from the sale of the recyclable materials, where some months we've had significant sales. Seventy-five thousand, thirty thousand dollars. So thirty thousand off of two fourteen. We're already in in better shape um, in that regard. So I don't want to say you know, we've done a good job driving the cost down. It's not like we're going to go from five hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars uh, on it. But um, there may be another hauler that might come in that says one hundred and seventy-five thousand um, dollars for a dual stream or single stream every other week. So. Uh, what we can do is um, just craft some language, and uh, but we, we'd li I'd like to have some sort of dollar amount. Is it worth it for one dollar savings to switch from dual stream to single stream? I think some say no, some say yes. I hate to put you in this position. Yeah, Jim, I mean, it's to me, if it's going to cost the town more money, then stick with what we have. But like I said before, if it's a wash or if we wind up saving a little money, it's worth considering. Go to single. And, and one of the challenges we have is we don't know what, with the loss of the mm -hmm. sale of recyclables, is the $7,000 that we got in 2013, is that going to be the new trend or was yeah. that a, a, a low shot. point? Is the 30000 more realistic and then, then, then it's, we're better off staying where we are? Rob? I just think with dual stream, we're long an option. And the option is that the market for recyclable materials comes back. With single stream, we don't have that option. There is a value to that option. So I would, I would caution against making a decision based on one individual quote in one year. Yep. Because I, I agree with Jim, and I think it will be very hard. I mean, look at the turmoil we caused when we, re, when we went from two pickups a week to one pickup a week. Uh, you know, on the regular garbage back in 2011. If, you know, I don't think it's as, well, well I don't think it's going to be as easy to just say, okay, we're switching back now to, to, you know, twice, you know, to the old way, from the new way. To me, you know, I just think that uh, I, I don't want to be in a situation of seeing that recyclable material market come back and us being excluded from it. Plus, I, I like the fact that when you do paper separately, it doesn't get automatically contaminated. Pat, you had your... Yeah, I was just reading back. It says here the borough will get contract quotes for recycling, disposal, marketing. Um, it says this type of contract is exempt from New Jersey bid regulation. So some of this is exempt. We can do whatever we want, and some of it is strictly by bid. Correct. Which, so the company that sells our material is um, that contract is exempt from okay. the laws. The hauling is not. Hauling is hauling. It's a very homogenous um, item, and, and as such, it's not exempt. But So we can go out and negotiate with Green Sky, with uh, Recycle America, and with other companies and say, what kind of contract are you willing to give us? Where do we need to deliver the materials to? Do you set that as single stream? Do you set that as dual stream? What are the rates that we receive on that? Um, but everything else needs to be bid. The MCMUA quote that I received happened to be a bundled quote that had both the hauling mm -hmm. and the marketing of the materials together. There is an upside, but it's a very low upside. The market would have to swing. Um, the, the contracts in order to be able to switch over on January 1st. But we want to get these, um, we want to finalize the bid docs and get these out in August. The reason is, is the haulers are filling up their calendars with towns and uh, we're going to lose competition um, for example, the MCMUA said, we'll do it for you, but Monday. We're, that's the only option we can give you. So the quote that they gave us was Monday to come in town to get everybody's recycling. Great, okay, Monday, but you have Labor Day, Memorial Day, you've got a lot of deferral days that'll happen on that. Um, so, uh, would but they be MCMUA, deferred to the next day or to the next pickup? Uh, it would be the next day that they would come in. So, um, so we, uh, you know, from a competition standpoint, I'd like to get this re hopefully resolved this evening. So the last question is then, you have to first go out and talk to all the people who you might be marketing the material to first to find out what the best choice is there, and then merge that number in with whatever bid 
responses you get in terms of the hauling or the uh, the other options in terms of where the recycling is going to go? Well, I think we have um, a very good idea on the cost of the materials from the two quotes that we've received. So the only bids that we're doing are, um, bear with me, that's next steps, where is that? So the only bid bidding that we're going to be doing is Number two, the yard way, the garbage, yard waste, and then the recycling, hauling. Um, whatever we do, um, either the MCMUA, the recycling marketing is embedded, or we're just going to go out and negotiate a contract. A last um, question, length of the contract. Uh, probably looking at, a, I think three years is, is uh, a, a minimum contract for these companies, um, especially... Uh, companies that are going to be taking the materials as well and shifting over. They don't want to, they might have to change their fleets and, and hire staff and everything for a one-year contract. It's not worth it. I asked the MCMUA for a three-year quote, but the option to opt out after year one or year two, and they said, we'll do the three-year quote. We're not going to give you an option. And we don't want to go any further than three years, or is that the um, most they'll do? What I would like to do is three years and then have options okay. um, for fourth and fifth year. If it's great price, we'll exercise those options. We had the uh, opportunity for, for oh, I'm sorry, Ben, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, we, we had the opportunity for the residents and the audience, all um, six of you, <clears throat> to, to speak earlier, but I think now you probably didn't know what this topic really was about. So if there's anyone in the audience that wishes to comment on this, that might be helpful for the council. I will allow that if you want to step up, state your name, and keep your minute, your comments maybe even to two minutes. And, and if someone states something that you've already heard and you agree with, you don't need to recycle it, you can just say, I agree. Uh, John Hoover, Overhill Drive. Uh, first of all, I, I certainly agree that five years is, a, is a more than adequate length of time to go out for bids again for this. That, that sounds appropriate to me. However, I have not heard in the analysis in the presentation any compelling reasons, real solid compelling reasons of what's wrong why do things have to change? I mean, every, there's been several personal opinions about you know, whether you want single stream or, you know, or the, the current way. For me, it's not broken. You know, unless it's really broken, why don't we just leave it the way it is? Everybody's used to it, the twice a week, to, the once a week, the way the recycling is done. Just leave it the way it is and go out for bids with the way we have it constructed right now. That's just my opinion. Thank you, Chad. Anyone else in the audience wish to pick? Schumacher, 163 Central Avenue. I think unless there's a significant savings, and I can't give you a number on what significant is, we leave it the way it is. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing that I close one. So what I would propose here uh, since is probably the easiest thing is to, if, if someone is willing to make a motion for the status quo, and if that goes through, that's what we, Jim has his uh, marching orders, and if that doesn't come through, go through, then we can uh, tweak it to, to give the, um, the actual uh, marching orders. Would someone like to make that motion? I move the status quo. Second. Further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? No. All right. <laughs> Thank you. This was a very uh, educational uh, presentation, and uh, we'll, we, you have your marching orders. No, oh, I voted by myself. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like to see these. MRC note rollover. Robert? The $1.9 million note will mature August 15th. The note was originally issued in June of 2011 in the amount of $3,333,000. That determines what the minimum paydown is. The minimum paydown is $114,932 with $19,000 of interest. Uh, in addition, we, we have collected $101,000 in user fees for the MRC. 
use of the of the uh, facility. We're recommending a minimum pay down of the 115,000 plus the 100,000 or 215,000, and we're recommending to roll over the note for 1,685,000. On that same date, August 15th, we will make our first semi-annual, our, our first annual principal payment in the amount of $230,000 against the 4,151 million, the 4,151,000. Okay. Long-term borrow. Long-term borrow. Uh, that's a yes. Bit, yep. Yes. Uh, ben, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, I wish I were in the room. I'm a little confused, Robert. Uh, you said the fees were 100000 That we have collected uh, in user fees. We collected 44000 and change in 2013 and 56000 and change in two, uh, through, through July 25th of 2014. And I believe it's by ordinance those user fees are dedicated to principal debt payment. But that's correct. That's correct. I, I'm just, uh, the only reason I'm questioning is because the, the numbers I'd seen previously were substantially lower. And this is, as, this is since August 1st of 2013 that we've collected the 100000 Correct. Correct. Yes. Yep. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, Rob? Has there been any field rental income as well? That's included in the user fees. So, so field rentals and user fees are one. Okay, thank fee, you. Yep. Yes. So basically the routine right now is because you have a fall season and spring season. The fall season goes and from the previous year and spring season, current year, right. support. So you the 100000 yeah. from the MAF and then this yeah. 100000 Pat? You're certain that we've collected 100000 in the last 12 months because all the projections I ever saw were sixty or seventy thousand dollars a year between user fees and fuel rentals. No, I'm I'm certain. Yeah. I'm certain. Okay. That. Yeah. Correct. So it's more than yeah. period. Oh, okay, that's fair. It's yeah. probably about an eighteen month period. Okay. That makes more sense. I uh, Robert Yes Ben the, the, I, I, when you say a hundred thousand is that Entirely MRC, or does it include rentals of other fields? It's entirely MRC. Okay. I've seen the dollars in the account. All right. I believe you. All right. Any other discussion? This is... Uh, got your marching orders, then. Ordinances for hearing. The ordinance that's scheduled for hearing was introduced by title and passed on first reading at a regular meeting of the council held June 23rd, 2014. It was posted and filed according to law and copies were made available to the general public requesting same. I call up ordinance 40-2014 ask the clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $25,000 from the general capital improvement fund for the purchase of 24 new self-contained breathing apparatus. I open the hearing. Does anyone in the audience wish to, wish to comment on Ordinance 40, 2014? Please step to the lectern and state your name and address. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 40-2014. I second it. Council discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. I declare Ordinance 40-2014 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice there of a newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. And now we're on to the second invitation for discussion from the public. And this is not limited to the items on the agenda. You may comment on anything. Please step up to lectern, state your name, your address, and please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the hearing. The meeting and move on to introduction of ordinances. Ordinance is scheduled for first reading, have a hearing date set for Monday, August the 11th, 2014. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinance 41-2014 for first reading. I ask the borough clerk to read ordinance by title. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 15 of the Madison Borough Code entitled Downtown Development Commission. 
Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 41 2014. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. <clears throat> Call up Ordinance 42-2014. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Ordinance 11-2014 setting salary ranges for non-union full-time employees to include salary range for chief accountant and tax collector. Okay. Anyone can or Ben, you can. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 42-2014. I Thank second you. that. Uh -huh. Any uh, discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Kedlano. Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Consent agenda resolutions. Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move consent agenda resolution R212-2014 through R232-2014. I second. Okay. All right, we have names for the, uh, yeah, the blanks. You have to fill in the blanks. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, posted. Thank you. And 215, the ambulance course. Right. Oh. Okay. All right. Um, any discussion or any need to be pulled? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes, but I will recuse myself from resolution R215-2014. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Okay, public safety, $67,422.87. Health and public assistance, $4,347.62. Public works and engineering, $352,388.70. Community affairs, $20,030.93. Finance and borough clerk, $4,082,818.88. And utilities, $1,321,757.27. <coughs> Total is five million eight hundred and forty-eight thousand seven hundred and sixty-six dollars and twenty-seven cents. Mayor, I move the approval of the vouchers. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. And there is no new business. And with that, I move that we adjourn for the evening. And Ben, I'm sorry you, you had your flight canceled due to the weather, but uh, it was like you were right here with us. Thank you for calling uh, I wish I could. I wish I could say the same, but I did enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Ben. Bye now. Bye-bye. Hey, those... Uh, <laughs>